Hello friends, Techman Pat here. Today we are looking at how to speed up your ping and your connection, reduce packet loss in gaming across both consoles and PCs. And surprisingly, there is a few things you can do, but it's very, very limited, but we're gonna go through them. And we're also gonna have a look at the Rapture GT6 from ASUS. Again, not sponsored by ASUS, nor is it a review of this product, but it does have some gamer specific settings. So I'll share that with you and uh, hopefully it'll actually give you an idea. Is it worthwhile buying a gaming related router or mesh system or or can you just buy a standard router and do it with those yourselves? Well, let's get started by rolling the intro and remember, like this video if you did, subscribe if you wanna see more content like this, and that's it, let's get started. All right, we're gonna be flicking around a lot of screens. We're gonna be reading through a few things, but let's quickly start with our ROG Rapture GT6 menu. This is the ASUS router setting page. You can get to it by navigating to the IP address. Generally, it's 192.168.1.1, but this may vary. It's best to look it up on your device to find that. Once you have logged in, you'll be able to access a lot of settings. In multiplayer gaming, there is a lot of things that are out of your hands. The quality of your internet, unless you move houses or upgrade your connection, the actual packets, once they leave your home and travel through to the other person's server that will affect your performance and of course there are things that are just out of your control it could be lag it could be some sort of random interference but we're gonna look at things you can control and those things are in your home and the two major things that we look for is ping reducing that to the lowest possible and of course the packet loss to make it zero we don't want to see any packet loss in our games most games come with a view of your ping and your packet loss and you'll be able to see the performance gains or losses whenever you try out new things like this. And some of the things I'm gonna show you is all about trying and testing. Now, the other thing I wanna mention is that both the ping and the packet loss Again, it's also dependent on things like how far away you are from the game server. If you're in Australia playing on American server, you will have high ping, it's very far away. But if you're in Sydney playing on a Sydney server, you will have pings less than 10 milliseconds. On the other side, the packet loss is probably what you can control the best. It is how much data is being lost when sending the data back and through to the server. So if you're experiencing lag or stutter or hitches, it's usually packet loss and that's generated and created on your own network by things like other people or other devices taking priority over your gaming. One thing I wanna mention is that if you are gaming, please make sure that you're connected via a Cat6 LAN cable. If you are not able to connect to the device or the router or the AI mesh via a cable, then you can use the five gigahertz network. Check that if you're on Wi-Fi, make sure you're on the five gigahertz line. If you have a device that has both a five gig and a 2.4 gig in one, like mesh devices, you can go into the settings here and actually split the 2.4 and 5.1 into two. Uh, the five dash two thing here, it's the back hole between the two mesh devices, but you can always split them to make sure your device is on a five gigahertz connection. That will get you the best performance, but if you are looking to maximize, make sure you're connected to a cable. The first thing we're going to actually do is run along to our LAN settings. And in the LAN settings, there is a DHCP server page and we'll look at DNS. But this will be completely different depending on your router. The way you found it in here is if you went to LAN and so on. DNS servers are very important and they navigate your packets around the internet and you want a very fast one. When choosing a DNS server, there are other options like Cloudflare, Google, or the one provided by you or Telstra, but you wanna pick the biggest and most popular one who has the, a lot of support. And that would probably be Google, which is 8.8.8.8 and 8.844. So let's put uh, Google's one in there. We don't wanna to go to Cloudflare for now. 8.8.8.8 and 8.8.4.4 for those following at home. That is the one basic thing that should speed up your connection to general websites and actually improve speeds of downloading games 
onto your computer or update onto your console. This will be a major improvement. However, it won't be just quite improving your ping. However, it's the first step we wanna take. Okay, we've now jumped to my DSL router because I wanna show you something that can only be done on the router connected to the internet. This next tip can work for some people. It works really well on consoles, but your mileage may vary. To improve the way your consoles get connected and stay connected for longer and smoother and without hitches, there is a little setting and this setting is only existing in the router or modem that's connected to your internet. Inside the connection settings, which we went to advanced and internet, you'll find a setting called MTU. It does say the default is 1500, do not change unless necessary. But what you can do is start reducing that MTU uh, and see if it does change anything on the gaming side. You'll have to do some testing basically. Go down by maybe 200 at a time and see if it improves your ping. I have noted that consoles do perform better on this. I have had people tell me about this MTU size for a few years now that it can improve consoles. Give it a go. We're just looking at all the things we can check out. Okay, we're back onto our Rapture GT6. The next thing we want to look at is probably the one thing that will change your life forever when gaming at home, especially when you have a whole heap of other devices on your network. Now, as long as all those devices are going through this router, this AI mesh, or this modem, then this setting will work. And it is the QoS, a quality of service setting. Now to get to the QoS and Rapture, we actually go to this thing called Game Acceleration. And in here on the tab to the right is QoS. Uh, before we do and go into QoS, uh, we just wanna share some of the gaming stuff we have here. And uh, we have Game Boost, Game Packet Prioritization as level two. Then we can use a service like WTF Fast. Um, I have tried this did not work for me as other people might work for them and there's also in device settings like if you've got an ROG motherboard you can do download uh, game first and this will uh, do some stuff on your computer we won't go into that we are looking at internet stuff but we will go into what this game boost is in a second let's have a look at QoS now QoS is standard across all brands of fairly new routers modem so this will actually work on pretty much all systems. Now we will jump back to the TP link to have a look at the QoS there because there is some more customization that you can do. However, in this case, we can just turn it on and then select what we want to prioritize. Is it gaming, media streaming, web serving? And what that means is the packets that are first arriving for things like media streaming will be prioritized. Or if we select games, the packets that come through gaming channels, you see the ROG device has a list of these IP addresses built in and generally fairly updated, uh, and it will get those games as top priority to the device that you actually select. We can select automatic setting, customize it and drag things like video streaming down or gaming to the top and so on. If you put gaming to the top, save it and you can see it'll be on top and so on. Once we press apply, the system will do the rest. And we can do into some manual settings and things like that. I won't go into that because I wanna show you what the TP-Link can do that's a little bit more customizable. This is the TP-Link's QoS. Of course, we would need to enable it. It shows us the max upload speed and the max download speed and the bandwidth that we wanna use. It says a thousand because it's megabits a second and this is only kilobits, so this is much enough. Now in advance, we have the priority settings, which is 60, 30, and 10, and you can adjust this as required if you wanna reduce and make things better. Now, the interesting thing Thing about this QoS is that you don't just add the games per se, you actually add a device. So in this case, if I click scan, I'll find the device that I want. Let's say it's my MacBook Pro and I'm gonna make this and I'm going to prioritize the MacBook Pro to have QoS. So anytime the MacBook Pro requests anything from the internet, it will always be prioritized over other devices. And if it was my gaming device, that means both the game packets and any downloads that I do will be prioritized. In this case, I can bump it up to 80% if I lower these two and make sure that that is actually the highest priority. Now there is one extra interesting thing that this has that a lot of others 
don't. And that is the ability to add the device via a MAC address rather than just an IP address. As you can see here, we've got some IP addresses, but if we press plus, it's going to the MAC address, which means if my IP of my MacBook changes, it'll still be getting the QoS priority. Now, some other devices do let you pick a program or a game, but those lists don't get updated often enough. So I would just suggest making sure it's the device and it's the Mac address. QoS will be your best solution to improving packet loss and a little bit about the ping. What you will notice is your games will overall have less lag, less dropouts and less disconnects if you have a QoS on your device compared to everything else on the network. If you have a big household, lots of people downloading, this is the best case scenario for making sure your gaming devices get those packets. Now, gaming packets are very, very small. And what happens is sometimes the bigger ones take priority and the little ones get in, ignored. And so it's best to have a QoS for gaming devices such as consoles and so on. All right, back to the ROG GT6. This next thing I'm gonna suggest is like the last thing you wanna try. Honestly, it's probably worth the effort, but there are some devices like this ROG GT6 that can do it a little bit better, and we'll share that with you in a moment. But you can port forward specific games to your device, e.g. a PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, Xbox, However, it's a little bit of work. So if we jump into WAN and we go to this tab here, virtual port forwarding, we can add a profile. Uh, at the moment, it's a limit of 64, so it's 64 games. Let's add a profile and have a look. In here, we can select things like programs, so SNP, POP3, that would be your email, um, or we can select from a game list. So in this case, PlayStation 2, Counter-Strike, BitTorrent, Age of Empires, as you can see, it's an old list. So what you're going to actually have to do, and we'll just swap over to this page right here, is find out what game you have and get the exact port forward for that game. So in this case, if we go to, let's say, port list and we go to games, this is a website called portforward.com and it has a whole bunch of games that you'd wanna port forward. Let's see if we wanna do Modern Warfare 2, which is very popular at the moment. We have the following. For PC, which is your installation via Activision, then you have these settings to put in and these UDP opens. And for Steam, you'd have these. So what you do is you grab this number right here, let's say copy, and we go back to our ROG page here. And we're just basically going to put, put this external port in there and the list of all the other ones and set what protocol it is. And that's TCP originally. And we're gonna call this Modern Warfare 2. And on the internal port, we don't have to, we just select the internal IP, which is my gaming machine, which is 192.168.50.161. And that is it. But you will have to manually add those, especially if you've got five or six games, you're going to have to do it manually. However, if you are going to be doing port forwarding, you do need to turn this off, UPNP. So leave that on. If you're not doing port forwarding, if you are going to be doing port forwarding, turn that off. It's gonna mess with your port forwarding and you're not gonna get a value out of it. Those settings for port forwarding are very specific, pretty tedious if you've got a PS5 and a PC and you want to set up the games that way. So the brains over at ASUS and actually a lot of other brands have put in something a little bit easier and it's a little bit of a one click kind of thing. And that is, a setting right here. Now, open that, we're gonna enable port forwarding, and that's the first thing we're going to do. And then we're gonna add a game profile. Now, ASUS has been pretty good at updating these games. You can pretty much see most of them are there. There's even Cyberpunk, Doom Eternal. Let's just go with, let's say, uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. There it is. You select your game, you put the platforms in, Xbox Series X, Xbox One, PS5, PS4, and so on. As you can see from the list we had before, this was all the settings for your PS4, PS5. Now, once you have set that on, you just choose which device it's going to, press OK, and voila, it has created the exact same port forwards that we've done just before. And that is awesome because it is pretty much fully automated across all your gaming devices in one click. So, ultimate question. Is it worthwhile paying extra money for devices that are touted to be gaming specific? Well, 
kind of yes. If you are one of those people who fiddle around with settings in your router or modem, then you will know what to do and you won't have to buy one. But if you're not, you just wanna play some games and you know that there are some settings you can tweak, you don't care how to do it, you didn't wanna watch this video. <laughs> then you purchased a gaming specific ROG ASUS product and it has one click port forwarding for specific games to enable the best performance out of the internet that you have, the setup in your home that you have, and your gaming console or PC and the game that you're playing. It is literally one click, but it is the exact same thing as port forwarding, except that port forwarding manually is a little bit more fiddly. So yes, it is probably worthwhile to spend a couple of extra dollars. Now, the difference is just quality of life. It's easier to do and quicker. So friends, I hope this video helped you to understand what the difference between gaming devices are and of course, normal routers and modems, and it could have helped you with your ping and packet loss. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you subscribe if you do. Thank you very much for the support. Like this video if you did, don't have to subscribe, but just give it a like, it always helps. And I'll see you all in another one. Bye.